Okay, so with this, I would say, and yours is not wrong. Like, I'm not saying it's wrong at all. I'm just saying, like, I would just invite them saying, hey, I don't know if you've seen my post, but I've got this, I'm getting ready to kick off this amazing boot camp that's literally changed my life. We're going to be focusing on X, Y, Z. Um, would this be something you're interested in? Or do you know somebody who would be? Like, does that kind of okay. make sense? It asks them, a, sorry, Riley. It like tells them exactly what you're telling them right there, but you're asking them a question and the beginning is more warm and inviting. Like just saying you're kicking off a boot camp. If I received that, I'd be like, okay, cool. What does that have to do with me? Okay. You know, but I love the middle part. Like I love hold on. She's trying to write on my, like, I love the middle part. I love where you're saying, you know, you're telling me them what that, what they can expect from it. Um, let me send kind of one, which I'm sure you kind of made this from this, but I'll send you one that I use. So maybe you can mend it to kind of be your own, you know? I'll get, you know, responses like, Oh, that sounds awesome. Tell me more. Mama. Um, and then it comes down to, they say, oh, is it going to cost to join? Mama. And then we'll stop so at that. what do you that. say to that? Um, I explain everything that – I found one of your things Mama. and your templates on the site, yeah. um, like for the lift boot camp, everything it comes with, and, and they're just like, well, I don't have money right now. And Will you send me – will you send me one of these conversations? <laughs> we'll do like a one-on-one -on -one talk with this. And, and see if there's anything that I can help you talk through one of the conversations, or maybe when you're having one, at, like in the midst of one of the conversations, shoot me over a text or put it in the group chat and mention me. I need to turn my notifications on. Somebody remind me to do that. Um, so I know when you guys are talking, but so we can maybe do this live talk because this is kind of hard. Just me telling you, it'll be mm -hmm. easier if I can see the conversation that you're having. And so then I know. Because you might just be, it might be a simple tweak that you might just be not feeling comfortable or confident yet with, and it could be a simple tweak that you might yeah. realize. You know. So I don't know if I'm just I'm thinking maybe because I'm not confident in the messages, maybe I'm just like backing off too soon, and I need to just push a little harder and be really confident. Like, no, this is what you need. It's totally worth money. Like, you know, just keep like, pushing a little bit harder. Oh, a hundred percent. You don't ever give them an out. That's what I told, um, Heather, I'm going to throw you under the bus here for a second. I love you though. Don't, don't think I don't, but she would be, do the same thing because she, she understands like the money's an issue and stuff like that. But like what she came to realize is like, I can't push off. Like, yeah, you can't, I always sell, say you can't sell out of your own pocket. So you don't know what other people's like financial situations are. So we, if we need to go into this thinking it's a steal and like, there's no one that can tell us not. So even if somebody can afford it, well, I couldn't, I had to put it on a freaking credit card that it took me a few months to pay off, but I did it because I wanted to. Mm -hmm. And that's why we've got to go in the mentality of like, we will do like, we'll pay for things that we want, even if we don't have it. I bought this stupid iPhone X. Yeah. Did I have the money for this stupid iPhone X back then? Hail to the no. But I was like, you know what? Your homegirl's getting the iPhone X. So I opened up a credit card with Apple to get the stupid phone. Was it my smartest decision ever? No, but I'm, I wanted it. And so we just have to go from a place of like, what baby? Yeah, I see it. We just have to go from, like from a place like that. You know what I mean? So don't push off because like Jessica said right here, Allie didn't back off me. I told her so many times I didn't have the money and I told her so many times you'll make the money. And Jessica's here with us right now because I didn't back off. Amanda, you got to You've got Jessica's. You just got to push. And, and objections, you're going to get more comfortable with the objections. The more you believe in the product, like I'm not saying you don't believe in it now, but the stronger, the better results that you get, the more this changes your life as you go on, no one's going to be able to tell you an objection mm -hmm. that you're not going to be able to push off. And this is coming from somebody who lied to her coach that she was allergic to Shakeology, mm -hmm. so she didn't have to drink it. 
That's me. I'm like the world's biggest, like <laughs> to any, I'm like the world's worst challenger. And now I'm one of her top coaches. You've just got to go in with that mentality, you know, girl. But yeah, when you're in the midst of one of those conversations, or if you come across it, screenshot it, put it in that group chat and email, like mention me in it and we'll talk through it or text okay. it. To me. You've got my cell phone number <laughs> and we'll work on it like one-on-one just to help you feel more confident in that. Okie dokie. Okay. What All else? Right. Does anybody Thank else you. have anything? Mom. <laughs> Anything else they're struggling with? Maybe something that's working in their business that they could share? I see it, maybe. Does anybody have anything that may be working right now for them? I know Adriana just locked in Success Club. Holy shit, congratulations. So what do you find that's working for you right now? Because this is your first month hitting Success Club and you've done it in the first 15 days of the month, which is awesome. So what, what do you think's working for you right now that maybe you could share with the girls? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um... Definitely the believing in the product is a must. Like, I just post about it, you know, about everything I do. Like, the exercising, the food I make, uh, you know, I also give, like, tips on some products I find on the grocery store. People like that a lot. Uh, Sometimes I just talk about something else because if I talk about that like too much they I can see the followers they kind of like go down when I talk about like the other day I did like a makeup sesh about something that I bought online and I got a bunch of packages I saved them all just to talk about all of it that's awesome yeah and a lot of people tuned in just for that uh, and kind of like just making it very like not too in your face like i i am in your face every day about the program but i'm still talking about something else you know just uh i do also my personal development people like that a lot uh i'm a christian i love faith and believing in yourself and all of that i believe that uh, that's just me you know uh so what I'm getting from what you're saying is, is that you're, you're not just talking about fitness. You're also talking about other things you're interested in. So you're giving value and that's a big yeah, thing. We're yeah. giving value. So we're giving our opinions on stuff. We're giving value other than what we're selling. And then we're also sprinkling in, like, I've got this challenge group. You've got to come to this challenge group. Like this is, this is for real. Like, I, I like that. Um, do you also, are you also doing a lot of like storytelling? Are you also sharing your story? Yeah, a lot, do you a find lot that of stories. Of that's the most, yeah, that's the most thing I do. I don't post that much, like post actual post in, in my Instagram or I have my both, my, both of my accounts linked. So, uh, I just do like maybe a maximum of three and a minimum of two a day. Maybe if I'm too busy, I do one. But my stories are basically everything and uh, everybody, I think that's what's kind of like bringing everybody in and the variation in the post and I got my pictures to what like, I just been trying to, you know, get everything from other coaches that have been successful. So I've been watching other videos. Yeah, about uh, how to get that. Cause I don't know much about the social media thing. So trying to attract people, you just YouTube, like, uh, media, social media on Instagram. Like I just been trying to do it when I can. But you've been doing something completely different. That's one thing. Like you're doing something completely different than the entire team because you are that multicultural and you are doing those bilingual groups and stuff. And that's why you're like, yeah. you have a big, because you are, do live in Puerto Rico you have that big Hispanic culture that you're trying to, but I can't help you with. And I, I know that. And you're, you're not using that as your crutch. Like you didn't use it as like, Oh, I need to get a coach that speaks multi-language and knows how to do this. Like you're like, screw it. I like her, but I'm going to figure it out on my own. And so I think that's something everybody can take from is like, you're not using anything like your crutch. You're just, if, if you don't know the answer, you're literally just GTS Googling that shit and like figuring it out. And, and it's working for you. And I'm so, I'm so freaking proud of you. And, and I, um, you find the inviting, the inviting helped me a lot. Seriously. 
I never thought, because at first I was just doing the media thing because I wasn't, like Amanda said, comfortable about inviting people. And I still didn't know how to even invite somebody as a coach. So I was like, okay, what do I do with this? Mm -hmm. But uh, when you gave us one of those calls that you were talking about inviting, inviting, I was like, it's true. I haven't, I haven't still like go for it. Like, yeah. And I went for it last week and it really did have a turnout. Like, uh, like out of 50 invites of, let's say I, I divided it and, you know, uh, all that week, uh, out of 50, maybe like, uh, 10 responded back and, uh, I got like maybe one. And that's good odds. I mean, that's basic. It, that's, and, and I know Charmaine's dealt with this too, because she realized, and I I'm throwing all of you under the bus. So I'm sorry. Love you, Charmaine. But she, when she, she's been with me the longest, so I know her story, but she like, she found a place where she was super inconsistent and she saw in her business how inconsistency hurt her but just the little time she was inconsistent it took twice as long of being consistent to get her back to where she was and so that's why i preach to y'all consistency um and i'll let charmaine talk about this a little bit but like if you aren't consistent for just this little bit amount of time it takes this amount of time to get back to where you were when you were consistent because they've, they've kind of lost the trust in you and you've lost that pipeline of inviting and stuff, which last month was that for me. That's why I only hit success club like 30, which I know you guys are like boohoo, but that's <laughs> low for me. And it was because I was going through the transition of getting a part-time job and figuring that out, not inviting, not staying consistent. And I realized how that hurt not only that month, but it's hurting this month. So I'm having to double up everything. And so if I can preach anything to y'all, it's freaking consistency. Like it's just showing up every day and inviting, even if you can't, like your goal is 40 invites. Even if you only are able to get 20 in there, do the 20, double up the next day or add a few more throughout the week. But y'all, you've just, that's one thing, like I can preach anything and, and she's preaching this and she's only been a coach for like all of two seconds is just stay consistent. Like that's the biggest thing is pick a number of invites that you feel con confident in and just stay Mom. consistent because the inviting Mom. that's, that's our business and it's the worst part of it. Like it sucks. It sucks so bad. What baby? I see. I'll put my candles in a minute. Sorry. It sucks so bad, but y'all that's the bread and butter of our business. Like that are if, without inviting, we don't have a business, which sucks. I wish I had people coming to me. If you guys can figure out how to get like a shit ton of people come to you, let me know. Just, just hook a sister up because I'm still sending 80 invites a day like it ain't nobody's business. And I'm over here with 12.2 thousand and I was like, swipe up. That means I'm going to get a lot of, I'm going to get a lot of applications. That shit don't work. <laughs> just FYI. But anything else? I want to hear from some of you guys, other ones, if anything's working for you. Or if you feel like an invite that's working or conversation or if you need help with anything. I've been following like a bunch of people and like I was just following the suggested people or uh -huh. suggested, but it ended On up Facebook being, or Instagram. Instagram. Okay. And it ended up being a bunch of other coaches and a bunch of like it works sales people and then they were trying to sell me their products got into a little bit of arguments, but, um, <laughs> I saw that when you messaged me, <laughs> but like, how, uh, uh, now I'm, now I'm just following friends of friends. So that seems to be working better, but is there any way to like have it to where you're not just like your suggested people or only coaches? Like, um, I like, didn't even know suggested people was a thing, honestly. Um, on, I know it is on Facebook, but if you're following a lot of coaches or if you're engaging with a lot of coaches, that's what it's going to be. Um, my biggest, I did an entire, um, training on growing your Instagram. Um, and it's on my YouTube and it's also in our file section. But my biggest thing is figure out the, like your thing, like your thing, if your thing's the bachelor, you know, go to you know, one of the bachelors and follow their followers or something like that. Um, because that's going to one, you probably not be a coach and two, you already have something in common with them. 
you know, like I'm a big fan of like 90 day fiance, which is really weird. I know. But like, I'll go to some of the American ones and go follow their followers or stuff like that. And so that means you one have something in common already. Um, and two, they're not going to be coaches cause they're not suggested because you're not right now. If you look at your page, you're probably following a lot of coaches or a lot of fitness pages. And so it's good to find people outside of that realm. And the only way to do that is going and finding them. And so that means like finding them off of like me, I go to mommy bloggers a lot and stuff like that. Um, but I did an entire Instagram training. If you go in our file section, you'll see it and just watch it. Cause I give tons and tons of pointers. Okay. Cause I got banned for like over 24 hours. You, yeah. You sent me that. And I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Like, what did I do? That's funny. Hey, Emily, <laughs> turn your camera on. We're going to chat for a minute. Hey, can I say something? Yeah, go for it. Um, something anybody. that I Googled about the Instagram that I think it's kind of like helping me like attract other people mm -hmm. is that I found out that you can have up to 30 hashtags in your post and it don't it don't matter if it's about the program or the or your dog or your kids or family or whatever, a hobby, but you have up to like 30 hashtags and then you kind of choose which hashtags to use. Like, let's say you write healthy, right? And then it's gonna be like uh, healthy recipes or healthy me or whatever. You're gonna see of that hashtag, like which one is the most popular one. It's gonna be at the top. You're gonna see like uh, a million posts or 60 million posts you choose the one who's the most popular one, that hashtag. And then so, you keep hashtagging like different, it doesn't have to be like the same thing and you don't have to talk about Beachbody or whatever. It could be like he healthier me, healthy, nutrition, uh, accountability, uh, plan. Uh, one thing though, hey, I'm gonna stop you right there real quick because I've done tons of research on hashtags. You yeah. want to use the one, yeah, and I have a whole training video in our file section about it because I'm obsessed with hashtags. And then we That's get what, yeah, I wanted to know a little bit more of that. Um, you want to use the one that has 100,000 or under. This is the reason. Those ones that have 1.2, 1.3, 1.4 1 million, so the opposite. so quickly. Your, pay, your post is not going to be visible but for like 0 .02 seconds, and then homegirl is going to get knocked out of place because you're not seen as a priority um so you want to use the ones it's the opposite it's like a hundred thousand okay. or under um and you don't want to hashtag beach body you don't want to hashtag workouts no. or fitness or any of that you want to hashtag no. Things that no you're fine hashtag things that are like about you like dogs or tropical or something like that that describes you that's not fitness so you aren't bringing one Cameo's seen this. You're bringing in beach body people if you fitness, beach body, beach body coach, hashtag beach body. You know, anything you're going to bring coaches in. If you're hashtagging a bunch of fitness things, you're going to bring it works reps in. You want to bring people that have nothing to do with fitness in. Okay. So you want to hashtag everything other than fitness. I hashtag mom everything, um, which still brings in a bunch of coaches because <laughs> every single coach and their freaking mom is a mom coach. I don't, that made no sense. But anywho look at it's the same training um growing your instagram i go over everything about hashtags but i'll also send you one that was super helpful for me text me and remind me because you know me i'll forget but text me and say send me hashtag youtube training and i have it saved on my youtube i'll send it to you because it's huge all right emily so i know I, i'm throwing you under the bus here because you know that's me i throw everybody under the bus so i know you've kind of lost your way with your arm and, and your fitness journey kind of got put on hold. So your business journey kind of did too. Have you put any game plans to try to figure out? Cause I know you're coming off of this slump. Have you been focusing on trying to get over it? How could you help? Like, do you have any suggestions on if somebody else is going through like a slump on how you're working through it? I think at this point, I'm kind of just trying to work. Like I'm doing little by little and slowly adding more. Mm hmm and you find that's just like not as overwhelming yeah because it's hard like I kind of just like dropped off the face of the planet like you were talking about like you have to be consistent and I haven't been mm -hmm. so I'm just kind of slowly starting to work my way back up I think so what are what are your first priority like what do you what do you find that's working for you to like slowly work in what do you find are you like 
figuring out what's the most beneficial for you to work in first and then work that in as you go or what are you just like, in case instead of doing like following 100 people every day i'm following yeah. like like 25 this yeah. week so you're doing everything you know you're supposed to just that lower volumes to work your way up to the higher volumes that you were yeah and you find that's like and that's being manageable for you to try to find your way back to where you were because I know you yeah. were rocking and rolling there for a minute. You became emerald in like 0 0.02 seconds, just like Adriana. So, and then your arm and, and that kind of sucks. So I just, in case anybody else, which I'm recording this, in case anybody watches the recording that kind of went through the same thing to Amanda, did you just say you could say something to Emily? Oh yeah. Well, I was going to say, um, you're not working out <laughs> Sorry, as much as your wrist, right? Yeah. So what I was going to say, just a suggestion is like, I would look into some of the other workouts on Beachbody, like the yoga, like other things and start doing those and posting them every day. Cause you're still promoting Beachbody on demand. There's lots of, you know, other workouts that aren't like intense cardio. So you can still be promoting it. Look at you go, Amanda. You know what I mean? Like I did a yoga, um, on my rest day just cause I was so stressed and I posted it, you know, it's still Beachbody and you could do like a boot camp right now for like yoga or people who can't do the other things you know which I, I have an idea for my like I have an idea for the boot camps that I'm gonna at the end of this kind of bounce around with you guys because you guys of course my boot campers first and my coaches second or my coaches first whatever you guys figure that out I don't know how to say it you know I'm not good with words but oh sorry it was my dog you guys know I have scroll brain I like lose focus I'm sorry. Emily, did you have anything else that you said that could help or I'm losing traction? <laughs> um, I don't think so. I just have a hard time. Like I go through phases where I'm like super motivated and I'm like, I'm going to follow all these people. I'm going to message all these people. And then I get sidetracked and I lose motivation. And I'm so, I have such a hard time like with self-discipline. Like I cancel things that I promised myself that I'm going to do. And I started reading, um, girl wash your face and I just read that chapter where she talks all about like I'm the first person I cancel plans on and I was like that is so me that like you couldn't have read it probably at the better like better time yeah and and just and one thing I found is I didn't want to like I was the same person like I canceled I would make all these like to-do lists and I would do like nothing of it you know and so I would just make non-negotiables for myself but like non-negotiables that wouldn't stress me out. Like you're saying, like you knew like, okay, Allie sends 80 invites a day. That's going to stress me out right now trying to get my business back up. So I'm going to do 20 and work my way up to whatever I feel comfortable with. Um, and so I like that you've pointed that out. And so if any of you guys or anybody who's watching this recording is maybe finding themselves in a slump, I think Emily's got a good idea of just slowly working your way back up to it. You know what I mean? And, and, and just picking a rational number that doesn't overwhelm you or stress you out or that, you know, is not going to take, I'm not going to say as much effort to stay consistent, but it's not going to take as much willpower, um, until you've built up that tenacity and that grit back up into you where you're like, screw this. I can do more screw this. I can do more. And then all of a sudden you're like out doing me. And then I'm sitting here like, what are you doing? That's, that's our goals. I want you guys all to do better than me. Um, but thank you for sharing that, Emily. I think that's helpful for anyone who might be struggling right now. So I appreciate you for allowing me to throw you under the bus right there. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> you guys know I love you. We're all family. Um, does anyone else have anything to share? Maybe they're struggling with that somebody could help or maybe something that is working for them. Heather, you unmuted yourself. Talk. No, I'm not struggling uh, per se, other than posting. <clears throat> geez, I can't talk. You're fine. Regular pictures on like my actual Instagram like timeline. I suck. Mm -hmm. Let's be for real. I'm shitty as hell with that. Um, but I have officially like mastered, I guess, my initial invite, which for the most part is copy and paste because I'm lazy as hell. And no, that's I, not lazy. That's I, working smarter and harder. I copy and paste and I'm not even afraid of it. I copy and paste 90% of my conversations. Like, I just don't want to come up with a new conversation for every single person, but there's no point. 
I've gotten the most responses off of that. As a matter of fact, since we've been on this call, somebody who works out to beach body and drinks Herbalife responded to me. <laughs> well, um, how about you read it and then you can copy and paste it in the chat in case any it'll help anybody. Okay, let's see. So we can hear it. I'd love to hear it. <clears throat> Y'all, this is like true mompreneur life right here. I've got her like on my iPad as she's sitting here on my lap. <laughs> okay, so I put, hi, thanks for the follow. I just wanted to introduce myself. I'm Heather, a busy Beyonce, and mama of two and co-owner of a handyman business living in Atlanta. I'm a stay-at-home mom, and I also enjoy helping people reach their health and fitness goals. I'd love to invite you to my next challenge group if you'd be interested. If not, that's okay. If you know anyone who may be interested, I'd love to reach out. I like that. You're giving them, you're letting them know who you are just like as a casual thing. And then you're also giving them an out at the end. Um, did you say Beyonce? Beyonce. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Beyonce. No, not Beyonce. <laughs> oh, I thought you said like, I'm a, like a busy Beyonce. I was like, what? <laughs> Some marks talking y'all. But no, I like that because I, whenever I first started coaching, I had one that was kind of similar to that. Um, I was like, Hey, thanks so much for following my crazy journey. I'm so happy to have you a part of it. I'm a busy full-time working mama and have a wonderful spunky two-year-old. I love fitness and margaritas and queso more than life. Cannot wait to get to know you. How did you find me girl? So that prompted them to respond back. How did they find me? And then I started a conversation from there. Um, Ooh, I like that. Everybody's putting it. Hey, thanks for following. I've been creeping on your page and I love your vibes girl. I'm so glad I followed you and can't wait to get to know you. Always get to see me a response. People usually say that word. I like that. I mean, you're giving them a compliment saying that you like and like, like their vibe and you've been creeping. I like that. Cause I use that for my coach invites and it's like my coach invite y'all is literally the most awkward thing because that's how I feel about sending coach invites. I'll read it to you guys because it's seriously the most awkward thing ever, but maybe <laughs> I'm gonna find out in a minute. But no, I, I can, ew, you just wiped snot on me. I, I completely can understand what you're saying about like struggling with finding pictures to post because I have been doing that lately. Like my most engaging post lately has been this one that I posted this morning with my iced coffee in 38 degree weather. Like that's like been my most engaging post. So I, I think my biggest thing is the caption is so much more important than the photo. Like, I think the caption is so much more important than the photo. So I will have a shit ton of captions in my notebook and then I'll take photos that kind of have something to do with it or me smiling. And so I think that works. Um, like the photo is important, like a, a nice, clear, pretty photo, but I think the caption is still so much better. Like the, it means so much more. Because it's getting cold as freaking balls out. I mean, not that those are cold, but you know, you get the gist. I, I don't want to go outside to take the pictures, mm -hmm. but inside my house is so freaking dark. It's ridiculous. And if I turn the lights on because they're, they put off that, um, like, uh, orange nasty color and I don't have a ring light or whatever. I just opt out essentially because there's no good light in my house and it makes my photos um like noisy girl i prop up my phone in like target on i go to like the book section of target and like because you know they got multiple shelves in the book section i find the shelf that's kind of good angle and i take pictures in target so because my lighting is shit too like i bought the ring light but I do that. So like maybe just find creative ways. You, it's good. You're going to look like a retard taking photos in Target, but you know what? <laughs> you're never going to see those people again in your life. And if I see you in the Bethlehem Target taking a photo, I'll stand up next to you and take a photo with you. She lives right down the road from me. That's why we all say. So I say for my coaching, I'm like, hey, how are you, girlfriend? I know this is completely out of left field. And if this comes along as awkward, it's because I've never done this like ever but I have literally came back to your page like a hundred times and I'm so inspired by you. Have you ever thought about doing what I do as a coach? Honestly, I think you would be amazing. Like how awkward is that? But I literally get almost every single person to respond. So I'm keeping it until I feel less awkward and then the post doesn't make sense. But that's what I'm saying. Like y'all, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. 
Oh, I like that you guys are putting your invites in here. So keep doing them if you guys have one that's working for you. Um, but like I say, you can never say the wrong thing to the right person. And so, um, Ajano, she said she was having like a coaching call. Like she was so nervous about it. And I keep throwing you guys under the bus. I'm sorry, but I, I just do that. I use you guys as examples, not throwing you under the bus, but she said she was having like a coaching call and she was so nervous for it. Cause she didn't know. And I told her, I was like, girlfriend, I was like, you were my very first one, my very first call that I ever did to talk to a coach prospect. I had no idea what I was doing. And she was like, Oh my God, really? Cause it, it was like so amazing. I was like, yeah, girl, I didn't, but you know what? She knew she wanted to be a coach. It was just me talking to her and, and helping her feel more comfortable about it. And no matter what I said, I could have said all the wrong things. She might've still joined because you can never say the wrong things to the right people. And she's my right people. And so even if I said like the stupidest things ever, which I probably did say stupid things, I can't even remember the conversation, but you can never say the wrong things to the right people, but you can never say the right things to the wrong people. That's the big thing. You guys, if they're the wrong people, no matter how much you say the right things, your conversation could be A1 from day one, it's still not going to work because they're just not vibing. And so that's one thing we can't get held up on scripts and all this stuff because until we find our people, until we find out who we are as, as people, it's going to be so hard to find the right person. I just said people a lot of times. Everybody take a shot for every time I said people right there. But <laughs> I'm just saying, and I don't even know where I was going with this. I tell you guys, when I start drinking, I don't even know where I'm going. Does anybody have anything to say? So I just shut up. <laughs> Charmaine, you got anything to say? Unmute yourself. I am. Give me time, girl. <laughs> Um, cause you've, you've done a lot of evolving in this, this coaching biz. And so I don't know if you have any, cause you've been, you're my, you're my most tenured. Well, the consistency compared to all of us. I will say, um, even what was it? Yes. Was it yesterday? Day before yesterday I had text Allie. I'm like, oh, I'm so frustrated. Like it was just a bad day and I was getting into my head and stuff. And I had moments where I want to quit because my business isn't moving the way I want it to move. And that I have to stop and be like, well, that has a lot to do with you because I wasn't consistent in the past. And that slowed me down tremendously. And I had to stop and think like, okay, if you stop doing what you're doing now, it's only going to put you a couple of steps back more than a couple of steps back and because of that and because now I'm staying consistent in what I'm doing and doing things that are realistic to me like with the invites before I was sending like I was doing like 80, like 80 invites and I wasn't able to keep up with that and I would get discouraged and it was become stressful to do and I had to find a number that was realistic to for me to do and um, knowing that I'm going to get those invites in every day. So I've been doing 25 invites for the past like two weeks. I just upped it to like 35 now mm -hmm. because now I see as I post more, you get those likes. So I go through my likes before I wasn't doing that in the past. I was basically say code inviting what you as you call it but I go through all my likes um I take time to develop relationships with others by commenting on their posts liking their posts and liking their posts is a good thing but if you actually take the time to comment like I'm going through stem social to do my following most of the people that they that stem social follow doesn't follow you back but as I seen, as I took the time to actually comment on these people posts, they um, following back like that. And I noticed a difference in that. Like I kind of played with it a little bit. And I noticed a big difference in that with me taking the time to comment and like their um, posts and taking the time to actually read and give some value to them that has helped me. Um, a lot of the inviting people might say, oh, I'm not interested at this time. But we keep the conversation going and establishing that relationship. And now because of that, 
they actually take the time to comment on my posts, like my posts, like and interact, engage in my stories. And that's one thing. Stories were not my jam when I first started this. I have never storied in my life. Never <laughs> in my life. I never storied. And I thought it was the most awkward thing to sit there. I thought people were freaking idiots. Like, what the fuck are you talking to your phone? Like, <laughs> like that was just not me. And now you will see me. She's the biggest party. idiot. She, yes. I love you, Charmaine, <laughs> but you are the biggest idiot. Like, she was sitting there, tagged me in something with toilet paper up her nose. <laughs> I love her to death. But, I love you, Charmaine, to death. But she had toilet paper up her nose talking about Duncan and tagged me. So I shared that to my story. I got like 20 DMs. Like, I don't, I don't care about the Duncan. Why does she have something up her nose? Yes. And but, then we followed her to figure out why she had something yes. up her but, nose. <laughs> Just and that's one thing that people so like. You probably got like a ton of followers from me sharing it because everybody. Oh, everybody they talking. loved it. Everybody loved that. And just because I'm sitting here with tissue up in my nose because my nose wouldn't stop running, like stuff like that, I would never have done. Like yesterday, I posted a picture of my hairy legs on my stories. Ooh. Like I'm like, well, we're not even gonna talk about that right yeah, now. Yeah, can we it not talk about my up. hairy legs? And it I put no shave November is in full effect. And I used a little gif like, okay, razor, please. Like stuff like that. Be creative. Like show the quirky side of yourself. You don't have to always be serious about it. Like have fun with it. And that's one thing I that's have gonna get you like, engagement. Yes. And like use that use the polls and stuff. Like now I got two polls up about who loves snow. Like something like that. Because I love the snow. That's one thing I did not enjoy. And I, my next post tonight is about that. That's something I didn't get to enjoy. The beauty in that is because I was so severely depressed. And this year, like, I actually took the time and, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I love the snow. And that's something I did not realize. And I used that and I took a poll. Um, grilled cheese. Grilled cheese? Cheese toasty. Which one do you call it? Like, and that is, like, what? going crazy. Yes! Just the silliest crazy. You are an stuff. idiot. I love you, but <laughs> That's what I have. Or the pop the rocks. Kind of really but like, that's one thing, like, I will never forget her and her husband doing pop rocks. They were doing rocks in the car. <laughs> like, these are the things, like, we think if we are like, we watch each other's stories because we love each other. But you like, if we, like, I will never forget that. And that was like, oh, I don't even know how many months ago they were doing rocks in their car on their anniversary and it was like this big like drug pass it was huge and I will never forget that and I'm like her clients or her prospects are never going to forget that so they're going to keep coming back to her stories to get that kind of entertainment and so me everybody knows like I got so much inner like so much reaction from me saying it's colder than a witch's tit out here <laughs> Like, I don't know if that's just a Southern thing, but whenever I was like, y'all, it's colder than a witch's tit out here. People are like, what the, or my Grey's Anatomy. I was talking about Grey's and I got so many people in my inbox and those are prospects. And so that's one thing like we, like, like Adriana said, we, we are fitness, but we're so much more than that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if you guys were on the team, the call I did Monday, like, like we're so much more than Beachbody. Like we're, we're moms, we're wives, we're girlfriends, we're, you know, like people who like Pop Rocks or people who love Target or Dunkin' or people who hate Starbucks because no one can like Starbucks. And then like, like that's us. And so if we share that part of us, it's going to let people, one, start to trust you because they know you. And so when you creep into their inbox, super like, hey, I'm going to invite you, like straight just inviting they're not going to be as like, what the, who the hell is this? Because they know you. That's the way I see it as like, if they're watching my stories, if they're liking my posts, they know me because I am hundred percent transparent. I talk about everything. So by the time I get to their inbox, we've already established a relationship. Even if they don't like, even if I don't know, we have, we've established one because they've liked my post. They've watched me. And so that's the kind of mindset we have to have, you know, guys. And also I want to touch on like the, when you post, <clears throat> She took my iPad. This bitch better not. <laughs> Some people like, okay, we do our stories, but everybody that, uh, as we post, everybody doesn't see our stories. So 
when it comes so they don't get that personality so when you post your posts don't always have to be so freaking serious like find some humor in it and twist it around so even like yesterday like my thing everybody knows me for my red lipstick like my red lipstick is like my number one go-to and everybody goes crazy about it so now i wear it all the time like that's the lipstick i will choose out of all of my 50 million lipsticks sitting right here is that red lipstick and i even put something about beauty and confidence and also when you put on your red lipstick just get your red lipstick like find some kind of humor in your post so they can see it because not everybody that sees your post watches your stories so that's more a, a way to show your personality too I love that. And I think this all just goes back to storying is a non-negotiable. Like if you're not storing, if you're not sharing your life and stories, you're, you're just, it, they're never going to get to know you. And I think that's the one thing Facebook's lacking. And I think that's why Instagram is so big right now is because it's missing. Like it has stories, but stories isn't prevalent in Facebook. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's one reason why everybody's being so successful on Instagram is because we can establish these relationships without even like doing effort. Like we're already doing these things. We're already these weird, like quirky people. We're just sharing it now. And like Charmaine says, it's awkward at first. I, to this day, still do not rewatch my stories and listen to my voice. My husband, when he's aggravated at me, he'll sit there and listen to my stories right next to me and just makes my skin crawl. And, and you know, it's, it's one thing to be uncomfortable doing it. It's one another thing not to do it. And so I like that. And I think eventually I want to do like a story challenge or something like that. Y'all, we're having so many good questions. It doesn't look like we're going to do a live power hour, but I think this is a lot more helpful than our live power hour anyway. So has this been like, do you like this time better than at five o'clock? Because I feel like more people were able to show up. Yes. It's just easier. It's easier for me now too. So we'll stick to this eight o'clock. Um, but I just, is there anything else anyone can share? I like how Charmaine shared about like Instagram stories and stuff like that. Do you guys feel like, like, do you guys, where do you guys feel like maybe, cause I know the numbers aren't throwing up right now. So do you feel like there's a specific, a specific part of y'all's conversation that you might be not feeling as comfortable in or might not maybe just not as confident and you kind of dropped the ball in that part of the conversation. Did that make sense? Do any of y'all feel like, like, Oh, I know the exact part. It's like the price or I know the exact part. It's the establishing the connection or I know the exact part. It's about finding their goals or picking them a program. Um, is there like, can y'all pinpoint where you might be struggling? I would say mine's is the price, but like you said, to try and start using, I'm trying to start using my story more to kind of, flip it around i've been telling you that forever because you have no but i just story. didn't know how to go about doing that like i struggle with that and i didn't want to make it a whole long-winded because you, know. you struggle and and i think it's part because you struggle with your story like you struggle because every time you say it you have to relive it and yeah. and it might be hard right now because it's it's almost and i don't want to say it with the saying it but it's like one part of your life that you really want to kind of not think about Mm -hmm. you know and so it's a big thing that can help you relate to a lot of people but it's hard for you to talk about and it's just gonna take peeling back the layers of the onion so I wouldn't say you have to talk in depth about it but like touch on it and the more yeah. you get comfortable with touching on it dig deeper and deeper you got to peel back those layers because if, if you try to get too deep too fast it's just gonna be bad for you you're gonna shut down I do like my depression, I had to peel back the layers of that for months before I could really talk about it. And I think that's with all of you, every single one of y'all have a story to help over that price objection. You've just got to figure out which story you're going to tell to help that price objection. Me, I had to put it on an almost maxed out credit card because I had no money in my bank. But I knew if I said no right then, I would talk myself out of it like I did every other time. So what's your story? And it might not have to be like, it might be like, you know what? I came from, you know, X, Y, Z and this. Like it doesn't have to be something specific with Beachbody, but something that built the person who you are to help or where you came from or something like that. So that's my biggest help with the price objection. Y'all, the price objection is never going to go away. 
we just got to figure out. And once we figure out that story and once we figure out how to relate to somebody, like you get their why you get, you get a jits of who they are. That second you get to the re you get to know how to read people and can turn, not alter your story, but tell it in a way that relates to them. If that makes sense. Like if they're, a, like a broke college student, go back to your college days. Or if they are a, you know, struggling single mom, go back to when you were struggling, even if you weren't single, but a struggling young parent or whatever. Like, we're, we have different stories. We just have to learn to tell them in different ways to relate to those people. But y'all, once we do that, you're gonna be slinging slinging objections you're gonna be like an objection ninja you're gonna be like but jam but jam mm, mm. any other parts of the conversation that you guys feel like you might be struggling with so i feel like my stories are losing viewers and i don't know if it's because of what's going on right now and so it's kind of depressing but it just seems like people aren't really relating or clicking so should i just I don't know. Like what you're taught, like your story that like when you're messaging them or on like your Instagram, like on my Instagram, like, so I have like found that even if you have a lot of dark shit going on in your life, you've got to layer it. Like, cause people go, people come and follow us for solutions. We're problem solvers. Okay. And so every single maybe dark thing you have going on right now, Chris, I'm on my call. Um, every single, <laughs> stop crying though. Every single problem we have or objection we have or every single thing we have going on, we need to, um, have a solution for that. You know what I mean? And so maybe if you're sharing the dark things in your life, think of the solution that you have to give to people. And so they can think, oh, I can relate with her with this. Like I, I'm in the same kind of dark spot, but she has a solution. I need that solution. Okay. Does that make sense? Or did I just really go on a tangent? Well, I mean, yeah, I've, it makes sense. Like if it was like mental health, but like right now, it's like it's mostly about my baby. And so I don't really have a solution for it, but it just seems like I'm losing a lot of people because they're just like, oh, she's just talking about her baby being sick. <laughs> Okay, so you're talking about your baby, being no, but turn it into, and I know you were a stay-at-home mom before, but turn it into like, now we don't have to stress as much because I've got this side hustle or something like that. And that turns it into a solution like other NICU moms, they're stressed about how they're going to pay those doctor bills or they're stressed about how they're going to make it to every single one of those appointments because they have to work. Well, even though you're a stay-at-home mom, it's still, this extra income is still helping you and your family not have to worry about those doctor bills and stuff like that. And so that's a solution right there. Oh, okay. So every single time you talk about your baby being sick or something, being like, but I am so thankful that I've got this side gig that is allowing me to be able to be there for him. Being able to be there and not have to stress as much about money. Even though you don't have a shit ton of money coming in right now, it's still something that gives you that possibility of not stressing. Okay. Is your baby a NICU baby? Yeah, he was six weeks early. Okay, start tagging um, like anything that's related. All of her babies were NICU Because I do that. Like both of my babies were premature. I had my daughter at 27 weeks hey, and I had my son at 29 weeks. So I, not, I even think about, I shared that on my Facebook, on my Instagram from the time he was born and that whole journey, but I wasn't doing this and I knew nothing about hashtags or anything. So you want to start re tagging and reaching out to those people that can relate. You're going to get a lot of feedback from that. And I had a lot of people when I even do that, I had um, NICU mom or a preemie mom, NICU baby and stuff. I have people who message me, be like, oh my gosh, your son was premature. You didn't want to look at oh, my daughter. Like, those are going to be the people you're going to be able to relate to. And even if they don't join you, just know they're watching you and you have a support system. And that's something you can relate in your stories. Even now, my daughter is dealing with ADHD. This is something new for me. I don't know what to do. I'm struggling with it, but I talk about it. And I have gotten 
so much support from my followers about that. And even Ali, one, Ali reached out to one of them. <laughs> and she was like, yeah, she was like, um, I'm following um, Losing Weight, Gaining Life. And she was actually one that has been a big help with me when it came to like helping my daughter. She even reached out to her sister-in-law to get info. Like, what things did you use for, your, for my nephew to um, help with his ADHD? And she's like sent me all this info. And like, you, you, you just want to use that and take it and use it to your advantage. Not saying like you want to take advantage of your child or anything, but use that to your advantage because there's going to be people out there that can relate, but also help you like you want to help them. Oh, okay. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no, he's just going through a lot of like vomiting right now and they they might be doing surgery on him soon. So and talk of yeah, continue, don't feel like you're getting on people nerves. Like, talk about that and just tag all the Nikki moms, preemie moms, preemie baby, miracle baby, whatever, all that stuff, put it in there. And believe me, you're gonna get a lot of support. Sweet. Thank you. Well, this call right now is giving me life. I am so glad I recorded it just so I can rewatch how supportive you guys all are of each other with like a bag, another margarita because of listening to my drunk ass is probably not <laughs> amazing. Um, okay, so I do have, so I've been dabbling in the idea of, and all of you guys have been through my boot camps. You guys even, most of you guys started like in the midst of one of my boot camps and you guys have all pretty much jumped in, not usually at the beginning of them. So how do you feel, of, like how do you think like a virtual fit club would work? Like not having a single, like a boot camp, having a community where I will open enrollment for that community and even you guys all can en enroll people in it. We'd open enrollment like, at a certain time ended each month and then just have this one community that's everlasting and everybody's doing different programs like how do you think like did that make sense my child's in here scratching the inside of her leg so i was super distracted yes you, i think that's awesome ali i love it like, are you talking about I feel like the boot camp i have right now which most of you guys are in it all the girls are like loving on each other like they're so supportive of each other and stuff like that and like with switching boot camps, I'm afraid of breaking up those friendships, you know? Cause like now I go to some people's pages and we have mutual friends because they made friends with the people in the boot camp, and it makes my heart sing. So I didn't know if, cause I know Amanda came in like in the middle of a boot camp and I, I Charmaine, you've been with me too long. I can't remember. <laughs> um, Adriana came in in the middle of a boot camp. And so did you guys feel like you were lost, even though I had those units there, or did you guys feel like it was easy to kind of just jump into the boot camp? I'm, I'm, I need y'all's help here, so work with me. So I It was a, pretty easy for me. Sorry. It was easier, so, yeah, because you, you went through the units and then jumped into the boot camp, right? Yeah. Okay, who else had something to say? I had a coach before you who I ended up stopped working with because she had an ongoing um, group that lasted every month, and it was just, like, ongoing, but she kind of dropped off. Okay. And so it made us all kind of feel like we were just forgotten. Mm -hmm. So I, I personally like the the more interactive, like doing the same kind of thing group. The same program. So yeah. like that's one thing, like it would it might be like different, but it would still like see right now I don't my posts in the boot camp aren't really like program specific, I don't feel like. And it's still super engaging, like my self-love posts and the rate your day and my food and me having everybody like team don't eat all the food, which none of y'all have helped me do team not eat all the food. I mean, I had chorizo nachos tonight. Y'all aren't helping me. Um, but what happened? She's Chris, she's crying. But, um, it was just the thought I've been having and wanted to see what your thoughts were on it. Did anybody else have anything to say? I know Adriana was going to say something. I think it's a great idea, like, for us to all be all mixed in. I don't know. Like, take her. Just take her. I personally have to do, I think, two separate groups. I still haven't had, like, an, like an American, uh, you know, 
everybody is from Puerto Rico, but I still do my stories and my post in English because we we were bilingual over here. So but, all of you guys speak both languages? Yes. Yes, but my group, I'm doing it basically Spanglish, I guess, because I'm that's me, I guess. I'm I'm a Spanglish. So have you thought about adding some Spanish into your posts and stuff? Maybe translating them? Because I know, do you follow Leticia Dominguez? No. Go no, I follow Leticia, yeah. Leticia Dominguez. Um, and if you go to Ashley Molstad, she follows her because they're like best friends. But she does that because she has a, a big Hispanic. She's like the number one like coach in the Hispanic market. Um, she does that. So she'll say like a story. Like if it's something she wants like her Spanish viewers to be able to really comprehend, she'll say that in English and then go around and say this, the same thing in Spanish to help her Spanish followers also feel like they could connect. Because with you, that's the one thing you're gonna have to try to find that balance between English and Spanish. So a lot of your posts are gonna be in English, but you need to know, try to, your job, and it's gonna be really hard is starting to figure out, and that's why following some of the bilingual ones to see how they do it on their social media. Like you know how to do it on the back end, but figuring out how they do it on the front end on their social media is gonna be challenging. But like figuring out which posts that you need to translate and which posts you wanna to make to your Hispanic viewers and stuff. Because even though yours are bilingual, not every one of them are going to be, you know, because there's still tons of Americans that speak only primarily Spanish and they need health and fitness because there's not that many health and fitness programs for Hispanics. There's just not like primarily. And that's what the big thing is messed in us is yeah, hundred percent. Like even the nutrition plan is geared towards the Hispanic culture. And so yeah. that's going to be a big market. And so I really feel like you would be limiting yourself if you don't start intertwining the bilingual part of you onto your social media. Um, yeah, I do it on the private. Sorry. <laughs> Go for it, Heather. I was, I was just going to suggest, like, you know, you can add font to your stories. I know you know that because I watch your stories all the time. Um, I was going to suggest like on the important post where you're kind of inviting or whatever, um, translating it there into either English if you're speaking in, you know, Spanish or Spanish if you're speaking in English. That way kind of everybody gets a little bit. I like that. Just some ideas, but I feel yeah. like talking um, in Spanish is gonna help you with really connecting to those because some people, they'll see you writing in English and even though you are obviously Hispanic, there's so many Hispanics out there that don't speak Spanish. Like they might come from the culture of it, but if they wouldn't have known you, they wouldn't know that you speak, like your first language is Spanish. I wouldn't have known that. Like I, when you messaged me and said you were from Puerto Rico, I legit was like, why am I doing a call with her? Cause I'm sure she doesn't speak English. Like, I know that's bad, but that, so I feel like not talking in Spanish, it's going to make your, the ones who only speak Spanish kind of hesitant because they might not know that you speak fluent Spanish. Did that make sense? Okay. Again, y'all. Yeah, I yeah. Really big margarita, so I but don't what do you think I do when, then I do my stories in Spanish and then I do my posts just to start off. I know I'm, it's a learning process and I'm not so going to I would like... start off with just your stories to try to just okay. figure that out first and then you can intertwine your posts. And then you can figure out a posting schedule to where you do like one or two posts a week only in Spanish and then the rest are in English. Or you do like you, your invites on your Instagram, you can do in English and then do it in Spanish or something like that. Oh yeah, I know. You can even my talk invites, about how you Yeah, my personal it. invites, I'm translating the hell out of them because most of them are Spanish. So I'm like translating the script in Spanish, basically. Yeah, because yeah, you told me that, but if they're just watching you, like you're not inviting oh. them, they don't know that. And so if you do it on English first and then do it in Spanish or even talk about all the time how you speak Spanish in Spanish so they know that you do. So if they reach out to you, because they might not know to reach out to you if they don't speak English. You know what I mean? Yeah. It, it's going to be a learning thing for you. And that's, like I said, that's one thing I can't help you with because me no habla, me no habla espanol. 
Yeah. Hay muy poquito hamburguesa, sí. papas fritas, margarita, chorizo. Frito, tequila. Yeah, like tequila. <laughs> like I know the important things, but to carry on a conversation, unless we're talking about queso and chorizo and tequila, then we're, I'm lost. Um, I took five years of Spanish and still don't know a lick, but yeah. That was just one thing I wanted. So, so some of you guys, Cameo had a bad experience, which I, I don't know. It's something I could just test out, but I feel like having multiple boot camps is just so stressful and trying to get everybody switched over to the boot camps and, and they all join at different times and having an ongoing boot camp just allows to never cut anyone off. It's just the onboarding system that you just need to make sure when they join the group that they don't feel lost. So that's one thing I got to figure out. But I just wanted y'all's feedback and see how you guys think that would work. Have you ever tried the challenge app? I did. It didn't work because it's another app people have to look into and another app people have to look to and they don't think about it. Facebook, they're just on it. Um, I tried it and there wasn't any engagement. Like Facebook doesn't have a lot of engagement, but Insta like the challenge tracker app had even less. Okay, because I have two people who are possibly interested, but don't want to have a Facebook account. And I, you know what I tell them? If they really want to create a fake Facebook just to join the group. Okay. That's what I always tell them. Because if they really want to be a part of the group, they will create a fake Facebook just to do the group. And they don't have to friend anyone or anything. They'll just do it for the group. Um, and if not, then I did have like a text message thread with a bunch of people who didn't have it. And I would like text them each day. But I, I, I wouldn't do that again, just because it was a lot of work to remember them. And that feels bad to say, but yeah. So I would just, but it might work for you. Like I said, it works if for some they content, don't, But If for they me, don't want to do Facebook too, on Instagram, you can do like a group chat with people that don't want to do Facebook. I did oh. that in my last group. There you go, roadie toe toe. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, I've kept y'all longer than an hour, so. I think this was amazing. Do you guys, did you guys find value in this? Yeah. I've got, I've got like bubble guts from it. Like I'm excited. I think this was helpful. You guys even taught me some things. So I've recorded this. I'll post it in the group just in case anybody, cause there's a lot of pointers we talked about. If anyone wants to rewatch it. Um, I do want to end it with a goal. Let me know one goal that y'all have this week and we'll, follow circle around next week and see if we accomplish those goals. So we'll start with cameo since she's number one on my screen. Oh, cool. Um, no, um, no, definitely just gonna follow like normal people and, stuff, just, and then get my signed. I've been working really hard. I've been sending lots of follows and lots of messages. So mm -hmm. I really am trying to get somebody signed. Perfect. Um, Adriana, what's y'all's boo-boo? You've already hit your two goals that you have this month, so you got to up your goals now. Yeah, I know. And uh, you emerald, so what's next? I can't, what's I can't slack. I was going to ask you about that, too. I'll ask you about it later, but I saw a post about some invitation to a group, and then I wanted to ask you about the D25 step that you can reserve, blah, 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 you know. Yeah, which we'll have since um, I do one-on-one -on -one calls for everybody that hit Success Club, so okay. I'll schedule our one-on-one -on -one call yeah well, um, my goal is to have more spanish followers and do more spanish in my stories and that's good yeah and do the ha and do the hashtags right and do the hashtags right <laughs> and start finding some spanish hashtags that really work for you like start doing some hashtags in spanish because that'll bring you some spanish followers okay gracias de nada <laughs> It's <laughs> good. It's good. Charmizzle. Um, let's see. Mine would be to continue to stay consistent because <laughs> because I'm actually seeing the benefit out of it and hoping that will lead to me actually signing up some damn coaches. Don't say hope. Hope ain't shit. It, it well, will. you know what I meant. No, I don't to know what sign, you meant. To sign up some coaches. I it's will. It's going to lead me to sign up some coaches. I'm not hoping, I know. There we go, so, homie. <laughs> you know how I feel about them, like, half-assed words? We don't that, need that. That's, one, that's, that's a major goal for me because 
it's been a minute since I hit success club or got any success club points and I but you know what it's only halfway through the month yeah we're only and I said that this morning because I told my husband I'm like man it's really crunch time and I said I don't know if it's going to be possible I said no why do I say that I stopped myself I said no you know what I'm taking that back because it is possible because it can happen today I can hit diamond today like I don't know that I need to stop it yeah, so, we have one more week for the I diamond have to dash. Stop myself and stop getting into my head and stop it and say it out loud too. Like, no, that's not what it is, and say what it is. Like, just put it out there. Yep, perfect. What about you, Brit Brat? Well, I'm the only Brittany now, huh? Yeah, um, you are. So don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the same thing as. Uh, Charmaine I think I've been doing really good with inviting and talking to people and a lot of people are interested but I just need to keep keep on keeping on that's I mean that's perfect and and just maybe fine toothing your your conversations yeah there we go I love it Amanda what's up boo boo hi hi boo boo so I really need to work on the personal invites and being confident in them you know Mm -hmm. which it's going to come with time. Like I know you've had that big, which you're super transparent with your depression and stuff like that on, on, and I think that might just come in your, your invites and the more confident you feel, the more happy you start feeling girlfriend. It's going to be, and I know like this has literally like changed my life. Like you, I I can I'm tell. going through so much personally. And this is like the only thing I have right now. Like it's, it's amazing, you know? So I and we love, love you. Share that. And yeah, I love that. All right, Heather, my friend, my neighbor. Um, yeah, normal. <laughs> um, staying consistent, your invites, um, your content. Did I pretty much just say it? Yeah, yeah, content mostly. Consistency is also, yeah. <laughs> hey, you still haven't posted the picture of us, so there's a post. Go for it. I don't have that picture. I never Are sent you it to you. Send it to me. <laughs> oh shit! My bad. Text me and remind me. <laughs> um. Okay. Do when I receive it. <laughs> Jessica, my new little coach. I love you. I'm so excited you're here. So, is your what is your goal? I know you haven't really finished training or anything like that. So this was probably really overwhelming or really helpful. I don't know. But what is one of your goals? Um. To post my coming out post. I know you're so scared. <laughs> I, but we've all been there. We all have basically crapped our pants at that coming out post. And so, like I said, I want you to tag me in it and then share it in the group. And we're all just going to give you so much love and so much support. And so it'll make you not feel as scared, but it's kind of like a band aid. Like you rip it off and then like, you're so scared to rip it off. And then after you rip it off, you're like, eh, that's not that bad. Or the roller coaster. Roller coaster is probably a better analogy. Like you get to the top of the roller coaster and you're like literally about to jizz yourself because like you're so nervous and you're so scared. And you're like, I'm about to poop my pants. And then you go down. And you're like, oh my God, I want to do that again. I think that was a better analogy. Yeah. Like I told y'all, next time I'm not going to drink because I talk a lot during. Hey, Allie, what about the success pods you were talking about? Yes, I wanted this... Since I'm working, tomorrow's my only day that I've not been working. So I'm working on, I'm going to be sending everybody messages um, and I'm going to be creating different success pods. So most of you guys are in the November one right now, um, but I want to do success pods according to how you guys want to work the business. Um, because I felt like whenever I was talking in those success pods, I was talking as if you were all going to be wanting to make this a six figure business. And that's not everybody's goal right now. And so I felt like I'm going to make two different pods, one for the people who really want to run and that I can talk to like they want to run and take no BS. And then the people who are just hobby coaches that are going to be doing it a lot less volume. So everybody expect to just be moved around. Most of you guys are going to be in the same pod. I know. Um, and then once you guys advance your business, so like, when you're starting to work for diamond, um, which I know Charmaine's working for diamond. It's going to happen. Charmaine. I know it. We're speaking in the universe. Um, and that's Ajana's next step is going to be for diamond. 
Yeah. If we get to diamond, I'm like totally lost. On that. We'll talk about that on our one-on-one call. Like yeah, and okay, so those that you. are not right now, most of your guys' goals emerald. And so we'll be doing a call on that to get you guys to emerald, but I'm just going to be shuffling things around. So just stay tuned for a message. It's going to happen this week. I've got a lot of big things coming. Like I really just want us to start just being an amazing team and start utilizing our team page more and start just loving on each other. And so I can't, that's why I can't wait for summit because those of you guys that are coming to summit, I know Heather's coming to summit. Charmizzle. I don't know if she's bought her ticket. Me, she is. Me. Yeah. You bought your I, ticket. Yeah, I did. Yes. Yeah, so she's coming to summit. So all of us that are coming to summit, we're pretty much going to probably bunk in the same place and just have so much fun. It's just going to be a girl party and then learn a bunch of stuff. So I just can't wait to just get to just to love on you guys. And so I just really want us to just be a family. And so the success pods are just really going to help have all the same people on the same level be shooting for the same goal more than that they were because our success pods are pretty much gone dead. I mean, Brittany, bless her heart. She's in one that like nobody else has left. Love you, Brittany. Sorry, but <laughs> so they're all just going to be switched up because they're a good idea. I like them. I think they just need a, a, a cleaning up. And so that was what that poll was about. But this was an hour and 15 minute call, y'all. So I'm sorry. Um, any last words? Anything? All right. I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to have a late night because I haven't looked at all tonight. But I love y'all. I will post this recording just in case anyone needs it. But y'all, just remember, kick ass, take names, and hustle with heart. All right. Bye, y'all. Oh, picture. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. For my name? No, Charmaine. <laughs> Charmaine's face in my picture. Mine's like, <laughs> uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> you love me. All right. Bye, y'all. Bye. Good night. Good night.